Hi, I'm Shlomik from Job Test Prep. In this video, we're going to talk about the 12 gains of the Pymetrics test, how these gains work, what they measure, and how to best prepare yourself for them. Let's go. The Pymetrics test is one of the most unique and challenging pre-employment assessments you could come by. Used by some of the world's biggest and most lucrative employers, the Pymetrics test has replaced the traditional question and answer format with short, interactive games. This format of the Pymetrics assessment creates a more pleasant and allegedly bias-free testing experience for candidates. However, this also means all sorts of special challenges you should be prepared for if you want to pass this highly sophisticated test. The Pymetrics test uses 12 online minigames to assess your cognitive skills, personality traits, and social behavior. A few candidates may be requested to take additional 4 games, but the majority get only 12, so these are the ones we're going to cover in this video. While you play the games, a backstage AI algorithm monitors your behavior to create a full cognitive and behavioral profile. That profile of traits in 13 categories will eventually determine whether you're a good fit for the job you're after. Here's a very short description of all 12 Pymetrics games and what they measure. Game number one, Balloon Game. In the Balloon Game, which assesses your risk tolerance and learning, you will be requested to pump balloons, where each pump earns you money. However, pumping too much will cause the balloon to pop, losing you all of that round's money. To secure your earnings, you may bank the money and move on to the next balloon, but don't be too cautious, as your aim is to gain the largest possible amount. Game number two, Tower Game. The Tower Game tests your planning ability by rearranging three towers with the least number of moves. Game number three, Money Exchange Game one. The first of two Money Exchange games in the test measures your level of trust through a given pattern of transactions between you and another AI-based player. After the transactions are made, you will be requested to rank their fairness. Game number four, Money Exchange Game two. The second money exchange game generally follows the same structure as the first, but the rules and measured traits are different. If the previous game assessed risk taking, here the focus is on altruism. Game number five, Key Press Game. Key Press Game is probably the simplest game of the whole Pymetrics test, at least at first glance. All you need to do is press a keyboard stroke as fast as you can for a given period of time. This game assesses your ability to follow instructions and your impulsivity but also your cognitive functioning. Game number six, hard or easy task game. The hard or easy game combines several tasks to assess your effort, decision-making ability, and motivation. It includes constantly choosing and performing one of two tasks, an easy task with a low reward and a hard one with a high reward. You should prove ability to maximize your gains from this process. Game number seven, digits game. The digits game is a basic memory game challenging you to memorize a sequence of flashing digits. Your goal is to remember the longest sequence you can. Game number eight, stop game. Another simple looking test is the stop game, mainly assessing your attention. The game presents a random sequence of shape in two different colors. You need to hit the space key when a given color appears. Game number nine, arrows game. Next, the arrows game is a condensed challenge for your ability to pay attention, learn, and adapt. You are asked to determine the directions of two sets of flashing arrows. Not only do these arrows appear super fast, there are also different rules for different colors. Game number 10, Lengths Game. Yet another attention-based game is the Lengths Game. In each round, you are shown one of two very similar images. The only difference is that a certain element may be slightly longer or shorter. Your aim is to recognize which image is presented. Game number 11, Cards game. Moving on to something a bit more complex, the cards game assesses your learning and risk taking through a series of card draws. Each card may earn or lose you money. Your task is to recognize the card patterns and win the largest possible amount. Game number 12, Faces game. Lastly, the unique Faces game puts the focus on empathy and emotional intelligence. It presents you with facial expressions and descriptions, and you are requested to recognize the conveyed emotion.
Okay, now that we know more or less what each game measures, the question becomes, how do I prepare? Well, the first thing to do is to know what the desired result of each game is and what traits it measures. This will help you understand how these games are meant to be played to maximize your score and, ergo, your chances of being hired. And yet, even here, there is no one-size-fits-all. Since the Pymetrics games are aimed at matching a candidate and a job, the best way to play each game greatly depends on the job you want. For instance, while front-end developers are expected to be instinctive and inclined to focus, systems engineers are expected to be deliberate and inclined to multitasking. And yet, knowledge is not always enough, especially in a hands-on assessment like the Pymetrics test. As in any game or any task, there is no substitute for practice. Job Test Prep offers the only interactive preparation plan for the Pymetrics games, accurately simulating all 12 games. Combine this first-hand experience with study guides and detailed instructions on the backstage secrets of the games, and you have the single most practical and effective tool to ace your Pymetrics test. For more information on the games, tips for success, and full access to the preparation, visit our webpage. The link is down below. As always, I hope you've enjoyed and learned. Now it's your turn to practice. Good luck.